we heard the rumblings on the horizon. Uh, I don't think any of us expected the scale of what was to come. I actually travelled to the UK. My grandmother turned 100. My colleagues told me I was mad. But we'd, we'd invested so much and we weren't sure, you know, whether she would survive this pandemic. But it was while I was in that space, seeing how with all their resources, how much they were struggling, just realizing that we were going to be in real, in real trouble. And on the long flights uh, back here, to try and start thinking about, about what we could do. You can't just put up a tent and put people in there on ventilators. You've got to have trained people. And we had massive gaps. Yeah, and that was the sort of bastion of therapy um, initially in the pandemic. Um, ICU and ventilation for the seriously ill. And I didn't think that was going to fix our problem. All right, Sika, take a deep breath. And again, fantastic. Another one. One of my friends uh, contacted me and said, no, look, there's a, there's a doctor putting a group together. It's something I've never done. It's a field I've never worked in, medical field. It's a challenge. I had one colleague here at the hospital who could bounce ideas off him, but then really the rest of the team was all people signed up through, through Facebook. And very soon we had a team of designers and engineers working on it. Our initial ideas were to use non-invasive ventilation, something that could be used in a ward where you didn't have highly skilled staff and you didn't have um, you know, lots and lots of oxygen. Our first devices were based on diving regulators. Quite a lot of us have done scuba diving and we had stuff lying around and we could play around with it. We had two weeks of complete lockdowns. Can't get spring wire, can't get springs made, so I ended up using a welding wire out of a welding machine, sort of make, make my own springs. Really, we'd have an idea you know, in the middle of the night, uh, share it in the morning. Um, somebody would have a design by mid-morning, uh, lunchtime they'd be printing and in the afternoon we'd have a prototype. I printed some simple non-return valves and uh, my wife was actually putting one back together but she put it back together the wrong way around. I looked at this thing and I, I blew through it and I felt, hey, there's a bit of resistance and that's what we were looking for. So for a while we called it the Roxy valve. So that was incredible. So we were able to then connect it up and say, no, it needs tweaking here or this is, this is not right or let's, let's redesign it completely and start again. Um, you know, that happened a few times. So it was trial and error, but it worked. So it uses no more than a normal bag, so it's 15 litres a minute. Whereas your CPAP units, those are 60 plus. I think initially we, were, we expected it to work, but we were taken by surprise about how well it worked. And it's ludicrously simple. There's a, a concept of, of PEEP when you breathe out, having something to breathe out against. It's all part of helping the lungs to re-expand. I saw dramatic results. I saw patients who were not coping on the standard oxygen masks um, actually get to high oxygen saturation levels in the 90s. So they went from dramatically low levels in the 50s and 60s all the way up into the 90s with that Oxera mask. Yeah, I think we had so little to offer besides oxygen. Our ICU was full, we didn't have enough oxygen ports. So it was heartbreaking seeing people waiting, having to watch their relatives, you know, many of them demise, they're with them waiting. And those first few patients where we saw them languishing at very, very low sats, and when we saw their sats with every breath sort of, sort of just climbing, um, I just realized that there was now a little bit more hope, <laughs> that we had another option. Another, another arrow in our quiver for those really sick patients. You know, our dream is that one day it becomes a standard item that you would see in any hospital made by, by 100 different manufacturers. Oh, it's restored my faith in, in, in people. Just to see how strangers are willing to step up and get involved. How people have given so sacrificially uh, with no expectation, you know, for complete strangers, has just been phenomenal. To be part of that has been incredible.